as an ER nurse, you never know what's going to come through the door. (laughs) And that was kind of the exciting part for me. Um, A lot of people, you know, they may say, well, that's scary to me. But as I got into it, it was exciting. You know, it's like you never know what you're going to get. And so... Welcome back to Resilient Nursing, guys. Today, our guest is Brianne Bell. She's been a nurse in the ER. Hi, Brianne. Hey, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I guess I'll start by introducing myself. You, you um, Elisa has already told you I'm Brianne Bell. I've been a ER nurse um, for, let's see, I've been a nurse for 14 years. And so the majority of my career has been in the ER. Um, which was kind of where I started out and just ended up loving it. And so I kind of stuck with it. And then when I had children, it kind of got too crazy. So anyway, it's kind of uh, just, it was one of those things I didn't really expect to like it and I ended up falling in love with it. And so um, I'm happy and excited to share with you guys today, just a little bit of the, um, you know, if you're considering maybe working in the ER, you have some fear surrounding it, whether you're a new nurse or you're in nursing school, or, you know, you are just wanting to make a career change in general. So um, that's kind of what I'm here for is to share a little bit about that with you guys. Yeah, this is going to be great. Was it hard to start as a new grad in the ER or kind of what was so, that transition? Yes, it was. I will admit it was in it was intimidating um, because we all know we go to nursing school and we learn all the things, we learn all the textbook stuff, mm-hmm. and then we feel like we know nothing. <laughs> we come out and we're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You know, so it was obviously that that fear um, was there, but I, what I really like had the mindset going into it was I'm going into it for experience Mm -hmm. because if you are a new nurse who is looking to get experience and you have the opportunity to work in an ER, it's an amazing place to start out to get experience. You get geriatrics, you get pediatrics, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get everything from sprained ankles to, you know, heart attacks to strokes. So like you really get a wide variety of knowledge from being in the ER. So it was almost like that extra semester after school, I just kind of looked at as it like, okay, you know, finished nursing school, but this is kind of like, you know, the next phase. And so it was really, um, <clears throat> it was really, when I went into it, it was scary, but once I got into it, like I had amazing, um, Uh, mentors that really helped me and trained me in a way that made me confident. And so as I, um, you know, began to work in the ER and get the experience, it really boosts your level of confidence. And that comes with, like, I mean, if you're in critical care, I mean, you have to have a lot of knowledge behind that to be able to care for these kinds of patients. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely um, something that I know a lot of people consider when they go like think about going into the ER like oh my gosh I can't I can't do that but like it's a great place for experience and you will have somebody that's going to mentor you and um you know kind of help you along the way so it's not as scary as it sounds (laughs) (laughs) I know the thought of even doing that for a new grad for me I went to step down unit so it's like step down ICU yeah even that was intimidating so I, I know it's even another step further for ER. Yes. And, you know, I mean, I think that's coming out of nursing school in general is there's that fear Yeah, um, because you're, you know, you haven't done it before and that's with anything, like any, like anything new that you do that you haven't done, it's going to be uncomfortable and you have to realize like being uncomfortable is normal. Yeah. And so if you can just do it and get past that, then that's where you grow. (laughs) What was a typical day for you like in the ER? So in the ER, there are, um, or the particular ER that I've worked in, I've worked in several, but the the layout would be, um, so there's a triage nurse. Mm. And so if you're not familiar with triage, triage is the nurse that basically um, sees every single patient that comes into the ER. So that checks into the front desk. Now coming in, 
on an ambulance is a different story. So if you walk into the door of the ER, you're going to be seen by a triage nurse. And so the triage nurse's job is to give you an acuity level. So that is, you have all the um, parameters that you go by that you learn, um, but basically you get an acuity and based on your symptoms and how you're presenting. So like if you're presenting with crushing chest pain, mm. you're obviously going to be a higher acuity than someone that comes in with a broken foot. So that's one area of the ER. Um, another area is, so you'll have your uh, lower acuity level. So like you'll, you know, like some of the, the non maybe ER stuff that will kind of show up at the door. Um, you will, it'll be like a four to five room patient load. So you're, you know, you're seeing, you're responsible for four or five rooms and you're seeing like patients that are um, less acuity. So like your broken bones, um, maybe even some uh, GI stuff and, you know, along those lines, just kind of thrown in there. So, and then the higher acuity level. So like, this is like your stroke, your heart attacks, your, you know, something that could um, like have a brain injury, something like that. You're going to have a lower patient load. So usually that's like three rooms per nurse. Um, and then as you move into like trauma level, obviously trauma level is a, is one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to require a lot of, you know, that's just your one patient. Um, if you get someone that happens to come in, um, with a major injury, um, that would be considered a trauma. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you want me to, I was going to, uh, dive into kind of what the difference between a trauma center is and, a regular emergency room yes, because please. I think a lot of times they're maybe used interchangeably which is is right but there's also some different like some different things about them too so when you think of emergency room this is like I said like where you're seeing like you're just all around the board patients whether that's um, orthopedics whether that's GI related um, you know cardiac related so you're having these patients come in um, that need um emergent care, but it's not a trauma. So when you think of trauma, um, these are extreme injuries. So like traumatic injuries. So you can think like, um, anything from like a gunshot wound or a major burn or a car crash, brain injury, something along those lines. Whereas like a regular emergency room would be like your broken bones, maybe like some dizziness, loss of consciousness, um, heart attacks, maybe a less severe burn strokes, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, those kinds of things. So your trauma center is actually inside of your ER. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're um, kind of one in the same, but there's usually um, in a trauma center, you have a designated area that's for trauma. Okay. Um, so yeah, those are, that's the, the major difference um, of the two. And in the United States, there are, actually five levels of when it comes to a trauma center. So not only do you have a trauma center in a, you know, your ER where your trauma center is in your ER, you have different levels of um, trauma centers. So in the U.S., there's five different levels that are recognized. And depending on where you are um, in what like states, some states are different, but some states only will recognize four levels. Some states will recognize five, but nonetheless, um, there's, you know, there's usually five levels. So a level one trauma center is going to be your highest acuity trauma center. So this is like, um, a trauma hospital that is located in like a major city. Um, they do everything. They provide total care. So this would be, um, every aspect of the injury. So they, it's like prevention, treatment, and then rehab. So this is some, you know, a place where, um, that's going to treat like these major car injuries, maybe someone that needs multiple surgeries on different, you know, different areas. They've got a trauma, they've got a head trauma, they've got an injured limb um, that needs surgery. So it's really based on um, the surgeons that are staffed. Mm -hmm. And so a level one requires 24 seven staff of uh, surgeons. So mm -hmm. whether that be like a neurosurgeon, a cardiac surgeon, um, whatever the case, they have to have them on um, in the hospital 24 seven. So that's really the major thing when it comes to a level one, you have to meet the, re um, the requirements of having those surgeons um, on staff. 
uh, level one facilities are also teaching facilities. So these are like where you hear like medical residents and, you know, like if you watch on TV and you watch, you know, uh, real life in the ER or whatever, like you see the medical residents, these are the teaching hospitals that are these level one um, facilities. And so the medical residents are there and they also do um, research, a lot of like research. So these are your research hospitals where a lot of um, things are tested and then, you know, kind of researched out. So um, they also have to meet a minimum requirement of the volume that they see of severely injured patients coming in. So that's kind of in depth. We won't go too much into that, but level one, the biggest thing is to know it's in a big city and it really is focused around um, having the staff, the surgeons and stuff on staff 24 seven. Uh, level two would be the next one down from that. And it's sim- similar to level one. Um, they do require the surgeons on staff 24 um, seven, but the major difference is that um, level two does not have to, they don't have the research part of it. So that's just, you know, that's just part of the level one. Um, they still see major traumas and stuff like that. They just don't have the research part of um, that built into their hospital. Um, a level three, this is kind of your standard middle of the line. So there's level one is the highest, level five mm-hmm. is the lowest. So like in the middle, you're going to have level three. And so level three, they provide care for injuries um, that are basically something that can be stabilized. So like you have, you may work in a more rural area. This can be a hospital that's, you know, not inside of a major city, maybe kind of on the outskirts. And that's not to say that you can't get a trauma that comes into your facility, but your job is to stabilize the patient. And so you stabilize them, you know, whether that's um, airway, whatever that is, you stabilize them so they can be shipped out, so they can be okay. transferred. You want them to go to that higher level trauma center to get that, that trauma level care um, that they need. Level one and two, um, they have, like I mentioned, the surgeons and you know anesthesiologists and stuff like that. Um, level threes do not have to have them staffed 24 seven. So that's okay. a major difference um, between that. So um, while they do have to staff them, they just are on call and they have to be um, accessible to the hospital within 30 minutes, um, give or take. So okay. uh, that is level three, level four. Um, these are going to be your hospitals that are kind of located even in the more rural areas. Um, <clears throat> they have something that's called, so they would have resources that would provide, it's called advanced trauma support. So this is just, again, back to if you get a major injury or someone coming in, um, you know, that needs that trauma level care, your job is going to be to evaluate them, to stabilize them, and then to diagnose and then ship them out. So like you want them like out of your facility as soon as possible, as soon as they're stable, they're gone, whether that's they're air transported or if they're transported by ambulance. Number five is some, some states don't even recognize this level. And then it's just, you know, it's even, this is like your most basic level, you know, when it comes to all five of them. So they, again, evaluate, stabilize, diagnose, and then transfer out. So those are the five main levels. And like I said, number three, and most of my um, experience has been in the level two and the level three. So, okay. But no matter what level they're at, you would still need to be prepared to possibly care for one at some point. Correct. Cause yes, the, the it's always, um, you know, as an ER nurse, you never know what's going to come through the door. (laughs) And that was kind of the exciting part for me. Um, A lot of people, you know, they may say, well, that's scary to me. But as I got into it, it was exciting. You know, it's like, you never know what you're going to get. And so what I also found that whereas like a stat, like a floor nurse, so like you're, say you're in med surge or you're in the, you know, whatever step down unit or whatever, you have your patient load, whether that's, you know, three, four, five, six patients, whatever that might be. And you take care of these patients all day long. You got to deal with the family. Yeah. And then you might have to take, have them the next day, you know, mm-hmm. on your next shift. <laughs> you're like you're dealing with, and a lot of times it's not the patient that's the problem, it's the family, right? Yeah. So with the ER is you're constantly like, I call it treat and street. You treat them and you treat them. Like they go, you know, so like you're doing your job, you're doing what you need to do. You get them stable you know, whether that's shipping them out or whether that's getting them out the door, you know what I mean? You bring them in and you push them out. So that was um, something that, you know, as a 
as a new nurse, you probably wouldn't even know to, to even like that, but I got to like it really quick. I was like, Ooh, yeah, I can do this. Like, okay. So it's not, um, you're just really assigned your rooms and then your rooms are constantly rotating with patients. So in the ER, you can get, which in the ICU and other um, specialty areas of nursing, you can get certifications and stuff like that. So in the ER, the main, the two main two, which I can um, speak to that I had when I was um, working in the ER was um, the TNCC. So that's the Trauma Nursing Core course. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, So (laughs) this is just basically like a certification that gives you some extra knowledge, some extra critical thinking skills, um, and like hands-on training to provide that trauma care. So a lot of my experience was in level threes, but we did get traumas. I mean, we got gunshot wounds. And so like having this certification allowed me to critically think through that because a lot of times, you know, we're like, we lose, you know, when we're in a stressful situation, you, you kind of like lose all of your knowledge. And so having that and being confident that if something were to roll through the door, that you'd be able to handle it. So that's definitely something, um, that you can look into that'll give you some more knowledge and some more experience in the critical care part of being in the ER. Um, And then I also had um, my board, I was a board certified emergency nurse. So I know ICU has a certification like this as well. And so the difference between the TNCC and the board certified emergency nurses TNCC is like a certificate. So think of like your continuing education classes, like this would be applicable to those. Um, or, and then like the B or the BCN is a actual certification, like it's a board certification. So like I had to go sit, like you took your NCLEX or you're getting ready to take your NCLEX. You have to go sit in front of a computer and take this test. So like, this one's like a big deal. Um, but this, this one, they recommend it's not, I don't think it's not required, but they recommend that you have two years experience. Um, and it's for ER nurses who want to just kind of enhance their knowledge of, um, you know, being in the ER and, you know, it just kind of adds an extra fun thing to the end of your name. And (laughs) you 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 get all those letters piled up at the end and it's like, (laughs) you know, but no, it really, um, it was, it was a tough test. And I know a lot of people, it, 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 um, it can be intimidating because it is a board, Mm. you know, certification and that kind of thing. But, um, if you're looking to, you know, just kind of get something extra under your belt as far as certification and you're wanting to go into the ER, that's definitely something that you can kind of do, you know, kind of just in the future, but it's definitely not needed to start. So that's just like something to work towards. (laughs) Earlier, you had mentioned the TV shows. Yes. And how realistic are the TV shows compared to real life? I know they they take some (laughs) creative liberties. Yeah. So, but what's your take as an actual ER nurse when you compare? Yeah. So um, the general theme, I guess, would be um, real. (laughs) But the actual, you know, like a lot of times you'll see, like, they'll take the paddles and they'll be like, okay, let's shock them. You know, um, it's a little bit different. Like, I mean, in (laughs) any realm, like if you have your ACLS, you know, that we use, like they're sticky pads and you stick the pads on the patient. And, you know, that's kind of how it's, you know, technology has advanced um, (laughs) to display, you know, like to, to have it be a little easier, but I think a lot of times on TV, you get the drama and the dramatic um, effect of actually taking the paddles and put them to their chest and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I mean, I think the the idea behind the medical problem is, you know, is real when it's displayed on TV, but like a lot of the intricate stuff when it comes to like, you know, what you would actually do in that situation as a nurse is kind of, you know, it's, it's dramatized. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a little bit more danger in regards to ER nursing correct just because of you don't know what you're getting when you're rolling in but like I know in those shows they are always having near-death experiences between hostage situations and bombings and like (laughs) yeah do you feel fairly safe in your environments when you're working at the different ERs 
Um, I did. I guess the, um, and I didn't touch on this, but um, you do have psychiatric patients um, that you take care of in the ER. And a lot of the times you as an ER nurse are taking care of these patients and not a psychiatric nurse. Like you, mm -hmm. it falls on you because you work in the ER, you're equipped to handle these patients. And so yeah. that would be um, the only, you know, fearful part, I think for mm -hmm. me is that, um, you know, when you do take care of a psychiatric patient, you really don't know um, how they're going to respond and how they're going to behave. Um, yeah. But I personally have never been in a situation that was scary in a sense that I was held hostage or anything like that. <laughs> um, but I mean, I can see the fear there because, you know, a mentally unstable patient is, is a scary, you know, I mean, it, whether in the ER or just in every day, if you encounter, you know, a person that is not mentally stable, I mean, it can be scary because you don't really, you don't know how to predict mm -hmm. their behavior. And I think that's yeah. the scariest part. And I know that there have been a couple instances like in the newspapers where it has actually detailed some of those events that they perceive on the TV shows. So I don't want to make mm -hmm. light of any of those situations, but just yeah. the frequency of which they occur is not as common as Grey's Anatomy or right. <laughs> the right. It can happen for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, but like I said, TV likes the drama part <laughs> of it. So, I mean, that makes for some good drama, you know, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it definitely, um, is a part of being an ER nurse is that, um, you know, and depending on your facility, I'm just speaking from my experience. Um, we did not have psychiatric nurses staffed. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of the times it would fall on us to take care of those patients. And yeah. I mean, they can, they can be a lot of work and then they can also be very easy patients too, you know, especially like once they come in and they're medicated and they're medicated and they're in their right mind, they can, they can be pleasant patients, you know, but yeah. until you get them there, that that's the scary part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you already touched a little bit on some of the pros and cons of ER nursing. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on what those are. And that could be anything from scheduling to work-life balance to the actual environment of the specialty itself. When I started out in the ER, I was a fresh graduate. Um, I wasn't married. I did not have any kids. I fell in love with it. Um, I used to work crazy hours. I used to work 3 p.m. to 3 a.m., which is, I mean, I was in my twenties and that worked for me. You know what I mean? I had no other responsibilities other than myself. So, um, the, the flexibility, um, you don't just have your 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. shifts, like your standard hospital hours. Yeah. There are other hours, like we had a 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. They were 12 hours, but we had 10 to 10, 11, 11, 12 to 12, oh, wow. um, three to three. So <clears throat> as well as your seven, you know, a to seven P and then seven P to seven a. So like you have those rotating ships. And so the idea behind that is to um, increase your staff as your, um, your patient load increases. The particular facility will have it worked out where it's like, okay, like this is our patient load is higher at, you know, 12, you know, noon. So we're bringing on three extra staff, you know, at that time. So it kind of, um, it helps the overall flow of the ER mm. as it, when it comes to staffing and not just having that, you know, group of nurses that come in in the morning and the group at night. So you're kind of really just uh, weaving those extra step, like that extra staff into the day, which really helps. Another part for me that I can speak on just personally is when I did, when I started out, I was a fresh grad and I stayed in the ER because I fell in love with it, um, for years. And then, you know, through the years I got married and then I had children. After I had my first child, um, I stayed in the ER, I actually had a really um, great shift. It was actually a nine to five, which is never heard of. I worked wow. in a really um, small community hospital and their idea was that they would staff a nurse from nine to five and then a nurse from five to, I can't remember two in the morning, three in the morning, something like that. So again, like kind of weaving in those shifts, but I had that eight hour shift. And so, um, it was great, but that's not really heard of. So <laughs> <laughs> don't get excited. If you're listening into this and like, oh, I'm going to 
in the ER and work nine to five because it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> um, but I had that, that, that leisure to be able to do that. And I, and looking back on it, I was so grateful doing that and having two small kids at home, my boys, um, they were, you know, they're two years apart. So, I mean, I still had a two-year-old when I had a newborn. And so that was a lot. It really, um, the balance was off and I had to make a decision to do something different because of the chaos at home was just not balanced with the chaos at work. And it was funny. I'll tell you a funny story. So um, my husband was home um, one day and I had to work a shift and I was in the ER and my, um, my second is he was at home with our smallest. My oldest was at daycare and um, he texts me and I'm, I'm sitting at work beside a coworker. And he's like, I just saw a rollover. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm telling my coworker, I'm like, get ready. My husband just saw a rollover. We're going to have like, you know, some, you know, an ambulance coming in with patients and da, da, da. And I'm like, where was it? And he's like, in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> and my little one had rolled over the Aww. crib. And he said, I just saw a rollover, but my mind was not in mommy mode. Yeah. My mind was in work mode. <laughs> Thank you very much for spending the time with us today, Brianne. And it's been such a pleasure learning about ER. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it and I enjoyed our time together. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes.